Previously on... Yo! Nobody got time for that! Let's go! I... I... I turned my head to face... Oh, what the fuck is this? My shoe? What? Hold on, what? Hold on, wait, this is a kinetic novel, right? Or was it visual? Fuck! Anyway, my shoes? What is this? Oh! And kill- Oh my god, I gotta choose between kill or rose? Oh fuck! I only got 50 minutes and you want me to choose between who? Fuck! Shit, hold on! Ah, oh, fuck! Dude, uh... Ah! Uh. Look, man, I love both of them! And fuck my shoe! Who the fuck choose my shoe? Ah! Uh, but, ah! Uh. Shit! Ah! Uh. Okay, hold on. Alright, alright. I love Kyo-chan because I love her personality. And, uh, yeah, not just because she's a gamer girl, but, yeah, she, 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 she I, I love her so much because of personality, most likely. And Rose, I love her eye color and, uh, and her, uh, her, uh, her shyness and, uh, oh, fuck. I guess I'll go with personality. I'm sorry, Rose, I mean, we had the time, but fuck. I really love Kyo's uh, artwork in this game, so yeah. Oh, but fuck, Rose! Uh, you know what? I'll come back here one more time because we got no time for this! God damn it! And I'm gonna go for Kyo for once, right? And we go for Kyo! Alright, yeah! Peace, Kyo! I'm sorry, Rose! I love you too! Uh, okay, Mizuki! Um, Kenji? Kyo turned to me, watching Rose leave the room. Somehow I could tell that she knew Kyo wanted a moment with me. Ooh! What? Kyo turned to face me, her head slightly tilted down. She was blushing! Did you change your hair color because it's all it's kind of gray right now? Is it because of the background that... that... Whatever that is, are we in a time vortex or whatever? Anyway, um, so um, I kind of missed up before, and uh, I never was good at making the moves. Anyway, what the fuck are you talking about? You made the first move, if I recall. Yeah, in the shopping mall. And holy shit, girl, I totally forgot. But damn, yo, yo, and that eyes. Yeah, I love that eyes too. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, you the one who made the moves, not Rose. Anyway, suddenly she raises my chin gently with her hand. What? I smiled, understanding what she meant. It's okay, Kyo. You're doing just fine. I think I got it worked out. She leaned into me, holding my face by the cheeks gently as we locked lips. Body and mind gasped. But I turned, not turned, I returned her embrace. Both sat there for a moment, which felt like it lasted forever, until Mizuki cleared her throat and Kyo pulled away. What did I just say? Oh, come the fuck on, Mizuki. We didn't do any. Hush, Kyo. God damn it. Back to your quarters now, please, Kyo. With a rosy blush on her face, Kyo smiled and winked again at me before dashing mischievously out of the room. Mizuki watched her run out, then turned to me, smirking. She's your favorite, then. Fuck! It's not like that, man. I love both of them. Fuck! I mean, uh... Heh. <laughs> Says no more. Choosing between those two is like choosing between two brands of fine wine. No fucking shit, right? Really, you can't go wrong. You're just lucky enough to get some. Am I correct on that? Huh, I, uh, yeah, uh, I guess that's one way of putting it simply, yeah. Complex, romantic situation were never my forte. Congrats, regardless. Now then, get some rest. Tomorrow is already here. But it hasn't completely risen yet. Right. Thank you, Mizuki. Of course. With that, she blew out the candle and stepped out of the room. Hold on! 
I'm guessing you guys want to see roses, right? Yeah. So you know what? Hold on! Alright, I'm kind of curious. How well is Rose's CG? You know what I'm saying? Because most of her CG wasn't that good. Yeah. So, let's see Rose. Alright. Right. Okay, Mizuki. Kenji? Rose turned to me, watching as Kyo left the room. Somehow I could sense that she knew Rose wanted a moment with me. <laughs> um... Just <laughs> wait. It's kind of similar to Kyo, but... Uh, whatever. Rose turned, facing me, her head slightly tilted down. She was blushing. Um... Damn, but, uh... It's not that, uh, big compared to, uh, Kyo's? So, uh, I don't know what you're concerning about with your tits. I mean, it's not that big. I mean, it is big, but, like... It's not like really huge like you said, I mean, I mean it is huge, but uh, not like, you know, yeah, I mean it's, it's kind of smaller than your head, so I think it's fine, Rose, yeah. Oh, so? I love your eyes and your lips, yeah, yeah, it's kind of like sexy, anyway, about what happened before, back at the lab? And well, she smiled, lifting my chin, and with her hand, I smiled, understanding what she meant. It's okay, Rose. I don't need it spelled out for me. I think I got it figured out. With that, she leaned into me, lifting my chin further as we locked lips. I felt my body gasp, but I returned to her embrace. We sat there for a bit, which felt like forever for a second, until she pulled away Mizuki right behind her. What did I tell you? Oh, come on, though. Ah, oh, Mizuki, come on, we didn't do anything! Hush! Rose, get back to your quarters now, please! With a furious blush on her face, Rose turned to me and smiled, her hands lingering on my legs before slipping away as she stepped out of the room. Mizuki watched her step out, then turned to me smirking. She's your favorite, then. I mean, uh... Uh... Huh. <sighs> No more choosing between those two is like choosing between two brands of fine wine. Really, you can't go wrong. You're just lucky enough to get some. Am I correct on that? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I guess that's one way of putting it, right? Yeah, simply. Complex romantic situation were never my forte. Congrats regardless. Now then. Get some rest. Tomorrow is already here, but it hasn't completely risen yet. Right. Uh, thank you, Mizuki. Of course. With that, she blew out the candle and stepped out of the room. I had laid in the bed, thoughts still burning in my head, but somehow I still fell into a restless sleep. Well... Now he knows! You had to tell him, didn't you? Trust me, I didn't want to, but it was either that or spring it on him just before he had to do it. You realize that doing so may alter the actual decision. He doesn't know all the details, so I'd say it'd still be fine. And if he pieces it together, Kenji isn't an idiot, Michelle. Even he if he has reached it as deeply researched as it, it is, it as deeply, I mean, God, I'm sure he can piece together the consequence of altering time. It's a risk I'm willing to take at this point. At this time, he deserves some sort of explanation. Whatever you say, Michelle. I just hope this does or this goes how you think it will. All right. I'll set up the co coordination coordinates, I mean. You two keep them in line. But really? Do you think we're honestly going to make some kind of a break for it when the time window is the only way to get us back home? You have a point, I suppose. Still, I expect no funny business while I set this up, okay? Whatever, Michelle. Just get this over with already. 
room went incredibly silent except for Michelle's rapid typing upon the keyboards and screens, entering in all the information required to bring us back to that specific place and time. I was shaking. This decision was going to be one of the hardest I made, I had made in my whole life, who? It shouldn't have been, but this fear of everything falling apart because of this one decision was... Alright, Kenji. It's ready. Now then, Kenji and I are going through this alone. What? But, but No buts. You can keep an eye on your... on our action using the monitor. But if you go through the time window to an alternate time yet again, you run the risk of overloading your indoctrine system. And I won't let either of you take that risk. Both Rose and Kyo went silent. Looking down at their still gigantic chest to use a bashly. Okay, let's get going. Okay, the white light in the center of the machine grew bigger as the time window opened. Hold on! Don't you get the same effect as Michelle and Kyo when you run through that cause you came in the same time with us? So is it dangerous for you too, Michelle? No one's like noticing this right now? Before it had always seemed to wel- or before it had always seemed so welcoming. If not strange, but now, it only filled me with dread. Hey, Jono! Soon both Michelle and I stepped through, I leaving everyone else behind. I took one last look behind me to see the others. Mizuki with her solemn, yet knowing glare. Bunny with a weary, hopeful smile. Both Kyo and Rose were fighting back tears, but they waved me off. I felt as if I was going to a funeral march. And it didn't have to be this way. Soon we were th within a time window, the world going fuzzy like it had in the other trips. It looks so it took a while, Michelle just standing next to me, almost guiding me, but with a stern look on her face. Eventually the world materialized once more, and I could see again. What I saw was my old neighborhood. My old house. Completely as it was before the accident. But it wasn't an accident. In the world that I was currently in and experiencing, this accident something that was purposely caused by my hand. Now, Kenji! Michelle turned to me and bent forward, a serious look upon her face. On the ground next to her was a bottle. Had that always been there? How long had she been planning this project? Yeah. Regardless of my thoughts, she picked it up. It... Kaenbi... Model top? I don't want my motors to get in the way. Of the decision, this ultimately it's your choice, and either way it goes, it will be greatly helpful towards my research. Magikai, boy. Your research is fucked up, Michelle. Huh? I know. It seems, Kenji, but what I'm doing is beyond who I am, and it's beyond who you are. Don't give me that fucking thing down! My hand clenched on the bottle. Feeling its heat as the chemicals inside of it grew hotter from the flame. <sighs> Don't pretend that you're better than what is happening here, Michelle. Fuck. Sure, I'm one. Per okay, sure, I'm one person, and I'm pretty insignificant when it comes to the future, right? But if I do this, I'll be a fucking murderer of my own parents. If I don't, I could possibly be committing suicide. I mean, damn. You don't know that. No. I don't! But you don't fucking either, Michelle! We were silent, standing there, staring at my house. A figure walked out of it, in a way. I deduced this figure to be me from a one week ago. It was strange to even think about, seeing myself from a different time, but it wasn't something that I could ruminate on for long. Regardless of your misgiving, Kenji, this is your choice. Make it how you will, either. Yeah, either throw the bottle or don't. This is the last I will say about it. Fuck! What the fuck is this, man? Damn! I turn my head, face! My goddamn shoe. Uh, never mind! I shuffled awkwardly in place as Rose and Kel left the room. Really? 
You didn't choose either one?